Uh, hello again. So uh, we're in a series of lectures that are called um, Introduction to Green's Functions. So we're introducing the concept of Green's Functions from the very uh, basic notion of uh, impulsive response. And uh, um, in a previous video, we just constructed the idea of Green's functions from the perspective of electrodynamics, and today we're going to see how this fits into the Poisson equation. The Poisson is with capital P. So, Poisson equation. So the Poisson equation is um, very well um, known from, uh, let me see, what should I put this, just a minute. So it's very well known from electrodynamics as an expression of this sort. Let's write it down in black. So we have Poisson equation as the Laplacian of some uh, le electrostatic potential, which will be equal to minus four pi times the uh, density uh, charge density in our system. So, um, and we're going to make sense of that uh, just by recalling that in our past video or in one of the past videos, um, we wrote the following expressions for the divergence of the electric field. So, divergence of E equal the divergence of um, the minus gradient of the potential. Yeah minus one over C time derivative of the vector potential, okay? So this is pretty much what we wrote and then um, we can just organize this a little bit. So this is the Laplacian of the electrostatic potential or the scalar potential minus one over C the time derivative of the divergence of the vector potential And this is what we have. And the Coulomb gauge, what is the Coulomb gauge? So the Coulomb gauge is really just um, choosing our vector potential such that its divergence is equal to zero. So then this will be equal to zero. And um, so then what we have is that this divergence of the electric field is just nothing but the minus Laplacian of the scalar potential. And this is, of course, uh, mm, then uh, equal to four pi rho of r comma t. Just recalling uh, that the Maxwell equation reads divergence of the electric field equals to four pi rho of r comma t and then as a whole we then have that um, this expression here is the Poisson equation that we just wrote upstairs and we're just going to write it again in red just to um, keep it there in mind so Laplacian of the scalar potential equals minus 4 pi Row r comma t, and now we're going to start the story. So then, um, the Green's function, as we uh, saw in the previous video, or or in one of the previous videos. So the Green's function is um, a mathematical object that satisfies partial differential equations in this following form. So if you have a linear partial differential equation, you can express, and if you can express the partial differential equation in operator form, let's say operator d, that acts on some solution phi of r comma t and this is equal to some source or excitation so then um, the equation that the Green's function will satisfy will be the operator d on the Green's function equal to delta of r minus r prime Delta of t minus t prime. Okay, so then this is how this looks like. Uh, 
Mm, so just simply um, for the wave equation we saw that uh, this operator is the D'Alembertian operator which is Navla square minus 1 over C square D2 D2 and then um, so basically the equation for the Green's function for a wave equation is given so the equation that the, the partial differential equation that satisfies the Green's function or that the Green's function satisfies is this one R minus R prime there's a 3 here there should be always the dimension so delta of t uh, it's a little bit so this is what we have mm. now um, let's see so then for the Poisson equation so that for this equation that we have here then the Green's function will satisfy an equation of this form let's change color again so we know that we're back in business with the Poisson equation I just wanted to show you um, just or give you a little review from from that previous video where we introduced these concepts on what sort of partial differential equation the Green's function satisfies but now that we um, just I recall that Let's uh, see that for the Poisson equation, the Green's function will satisfy an equation of this form. Okay, so then in uh, so we have to find somehow the Green's function from this uh, from this expression that we have here. So then what we're going to do is then um, we're going to multiply both sides of this equation by some quantities and then we're going to integrate over r and over um, mm, and over t so let's write Laplacian of the Green's function and let's multiply this for this by something here and then this is equal to d 3r the t and then multiply this by something here so that something is going to be e to the i or better to the minus i k dot r times e to the i omega t the same here e to the minus i k dot r times e to the i omega t t and then we're going to have to integrate with respect to d3r and respect to t both sides the same here so d3r dt and then from the left hand side or the right hand side sorry we see that this is the uh, so let's erase this delta 3r of r e to the minus i k dot r d3 r times the integral of delta t e to the i omega t dt this both integrals this is equal to 1 and this is equal to 1 as well so then that means that this full integral here is equal to 1 okay so then and if we just uh, elaborate a little bit what's going to happen is that we will write the double integral of the Laplacian of the Green's function times e to the minus i k dot r e to the i omega t d3r dt then um, this is equal to 1 of course so then we have to solve somehow the Green's function from here so then um, we can do it in a rather straight way so then 
uh, what I would do is this. I will write the result. So then I will tell you that from this, you can see that this looks like something in Fourier space. So I will tell you that the result is this. See? This is the result. Um, I have been committed in the channel to uh, show you how to arrive at stuff. Uh, and for me, that's very important because I believe that uh, now we are losing the tradition to actually go through the steps and arrive at the important results. And very important to to um, see how to to develop um, equations, to how to develop procedures. So then, I think that we have lost that tradition a little bit. So then I want to show you how to do it. In all my videos, I want to show detail. So that's, uh, that's more or less the fingerprint of this channel, detail. And uh, so what we're going to do here to actually try to arrive at this expression is that we're going to take this integral and we're going to split it in two. So then this integral will be equal to integral over dt e to the i omega t integral of the Laplacian of GRT e to the minus i k dot r d3r so what we're going to do here is that we're going to do integration by parts and then we're going to set let me write the the variables that I'm going to use in green here to the um, right remember that the integral of du v is equal to uv minus the integral of the v u okay so that's what integration by parts looks like and we're going to see that here u is equal to e to the minus i k dot r and the v is equal to the laplacian of the green's function so then v that's like just one uh um, integral over the full space so then this uh, one Laplacian will go one derivative and then we will be left with this gradient of G and then uh, what will be du? du will be equal to minus I the absolute value of K e to the minus K dot R that's what uh, that will be equal to. So then we just plug those back in the the inner integral. So then this is the integral over dt e to the i omega t. So then this integral will be equal to u times b. So u is this, v is this. So then this is gradient of grt times e to the minus i k dot r. This, of course, evaluated in the extremes of the Green's function. Um, so then this, let's write here, extremes. And uh, there's a property of the Green's function that both the Green's function and its first derivative are zero in the extremes. So then this is equal to zero. And then we write minus the integral over u db, um, sorry, over v du, where is v? And this is du. So then this is minus i absolute value of k gradient of g e to the minus i k dot r d3r. And then I close this bracket here, the same bracket that I have here. Okay. And then this is nothing but the integral over dt e to the i omega t. The, uh, this minus and this minus go away. So then this is here, this is i absolute value of k integral of the gradient of g of rt e to the minus i k dot r d3r so then 
now we're left with another integral. What, what we have to try to arrive at is at uh, just the integral of g. So just get rid of the now la operation. That's what we're, go what we're trying to do now. Let's use orange to denote the new um, integration by parts. So u dv equals to uv minus v du. That's what we're going to do. And then in this case, u is the same as before, so u is e to the minus i k dot r so the u is equal to minus i absolute value of k e to the minus i k dot r um, v is of course sorry, dv is of course equals to the gradient of the Green's function and Mm. V is then uh, that integral, so V is just what we were looking for. Okay, so um, then now we're just uh, mm, ready to plug all of these values back into our integral. So then th this, our integral is the integral over the T e to the i omega t i um, absolute value of k so then this integral here is uh, mm, what is that integral there so then u times v so then this u and this v here so then this is g of r comma t e to the minus i k dot r evaluated at the extremes we know that this is zero, so the Green's function, the impulse response, which is a property of the impulse response, is zero in the extremes. And this is minus the integral uh, of who? V du, and then du is minus i here. Absolute value of k. We write g of r comma t. We write e to the minus i k dot r, the 3 r. And then we close this bracket. That's not a cool, that's actually not a bracket. I think that's actually, I don't know what's the name in English for this. So we just write um, the integral over dt e to the i omega t. Um, this is positive here. So then this will be here. Uh, this minus and minus will turn to be a plus so then this is plus here and so this is uh, this i absolute value of k and this i absolute value of k mm, picks up a square see and this is the integral of g of r comma t e to the minus i k dot r d3 r this is now what we're looking for. This is j of k comma t. So the the Fourier transform in in with respect to to the coordinate space, and then we write i square is minus absolute value of k square integral of the t e to the i omega t g of k comma t. This is equal to minus k square. Now, this is the Fourier transform in the time dom in with respect to the time variable. So this is g k omega. And this is equal to 1. And mm, we just use this scheme. This is a square is that a vector is a, is a modulus, a square. So then from here, we just write j of k comma omega equals to minus one over k square. So then, and this is the result that I promise you we will arrive at, but the important thing is uh, now in this process is the, we're looking for the Green's function as a function of r and t. So then 
how we're going to do that. So we're going to do the following now in blue. I'm going to write uh, this uh, this following expression um, for the inverse Fourier transform. So the inverse Fourier transform is written in the following way. So the double integral d three k the omega. 2 pi to the power of 4 and this will be g of k omega e to the i k dot r now they pick up a different sign with respect to the to the direct Fourier transform both the time and uh, and the coordinate r minus omega t so then this is the and this is the uh, inverse Fourier transform i just replace this for minus one over k square okay so then this is the double integral of the 3k the omega 4 pi to the power of 4 and this is e to the i k dot r k squared times e to the minus i omega t okay and um, we can move forward really quick here so then this is the 3k 2 pi over 3 um, uh, to the bottom of 3 e to the i k dot r divided by k squared and this is the integral of d omega divided by 2 pi e to the minus i omega t and this is nothing but delta of t so then this is equal to here just uh, pretty much immediately we will see oh we missed up a sign here so there's a sign here a minus sign so then this is minus delta and then this d3k is nothing but k square let's see dk sine of theta d theta d phi in spherical coordinates let's pull out this 2 pi to the power of 3 and then this is uh, e to the i k dot r mm, divided by k square so these two cases squares they go away and we know that k dot r is nothing but the modulus of each of this the product of the modulus times the cosine between the and between the two vectors to just keep moving uh, fast here so then we have minus delta t and uh, this uh, minus delta t is divided by 2 pi cube integral over d phi t so then integral over dk and um, we have mm, mm, the following so let me see how we're going to do this let's write it like this so we have e to the i k r cos theta we have uh, times sine theta d theta okay i think that uh, we're almost done here so just know that this integral over phi goes from 0 to 2 pi so then this is equal to 2 pi cancels one of the two pi's here in this three so this is minus delta of t divided by 2 pi square this is dk here then uh, you have to notice or um, i encourage you to notice the following now you have to u is equal to cos theta so then du it will be equal to minus sine theta d theta okay so you just see that we have here the differential that we're looking for just by uh, putting this sign in front of here so then we have um, 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 
so mm, there's one integral because um, I want to keep track of the integrals there is one integral missing here we need one integral here because we're integrating respect to theta so this is the integral now respect to u so e to the i k r u so the u and then uh, what we have here is the following so we have to see if u is equal to cosine theta so then for theta equal to zero u is equal to one so then we have the first limit here and for theta equal to pi u is equal to minus one okay then this is two minus one and then um, so let's erase this a little bit here let's see so um, then uh, we continue here so this is minus delta of t divided by 2 pi square dk this is uh, now if we integrate this is e to the i k r u divided by i k r this is between 1 and minus 1 this will give us to flip this we need to change sign so then if this is plus 1 this is minus 1 now this is a plus here mm, oh sorry no, no this this was a plus here because we put this minus here in the minus sign and uh, the theta so then actually this sign here is a minus okay so then that sign is a minus um if we just flip the in the order of in of evaluation of the integral there so then this is minus delta t 2 pi square this here is an r dk so and we have uh, e to the i k r minus e to the minus i k r divided by i k see so then we want this looks like a sign and for that to be a sign so we need a 2 here and we need a 2 here with that done then this is minus delta t this 2 goes away with one of these 2 so then this is 2 pi square r okay that's what is going to happen and then this is the integral over dk of what this is pretty much sine of kr divided by k from 0 to plus infinity and this is this all this integral is equal to pi square over 2 okay so um, then um, let me see um, what this says here this is minus delta of t to pi square r times pi square divided by 2 so this pi squares goes away and this is minus delta t uh, 4 um, there is something that I think there is, I have a bit of an inconsistency here because oh yeah yeah because the integral is not pi square that's right the integral is just pi so this is just pi here so then I can only cancel one pi so then this pi just cancels one pi there so this is 4 pi r or what's the same minus delta t divided by 4 pi absolute value of the vector r which means that the Green's function g of r minus r prime comma t minus t prime is nothing but minus 1 over 4 pi absolute value of r minus r prime times delta of t minus t prime then what's, that's what the Green's function for the Poisson equation is so we did it uh, step by step uh, now then you might wonder okay and we get the Green's function now what we do with this so then that's a good question 
Uh, so um, then let's just uh, do a small uh, review of what we uh, saw in this previous video where we introduced the concept of Green's functions from classical dynamics and let's do it in purple. So then what happened? So then we said that uh, for for instance, for Green's functions, for or for or for partial differential equations of this form, uh, where the solution is phi of r t equal to some source. So then, uh, the solution. So this equation is given by, we will, uh, I mean, elaborate more on this in the future. So the solution is given by the integral over d3r prime, dt prime, the Green's function, r minus r prime, t minus t prime, times the source evaluated at t, r prime and t prime. And that's what the solution is, and of course, uh, for this problem, we have to remember that the Green's function g of r satisfies an equation of this form. This is for the wave equation, just an example of a PDE. So then this operator goes on the Green's function r minus r prime, t minus t prime, equal to delta 3 of r minus r prime, delta of t minus t prime. Okay, so then this is uh, um, what the uh, partial differential equation that the Green's function satisfies. And this, uh, we will see that we will find this all through physics. This is actually the form of equation of motion. Equation of motion for the Green's function. Okay, so then um, knowing this, so then uh, we recall that for the Poisson equation, which is actually a partial differential equation, so then for the Poisson equation given by uh, the Laplacian of the uh, scalar potential equal to minus 4 pi rho of r comma t so then this thing here is what we call the source see so s of r comma t and then so we know that for this problem we said that the Green's function satisfy um, uh, equation of uh, yes an equation of this form of motion and then we found the Green's function to be minus 1 over 4 pi absolute value of r times delta of t and then with this uh, Green's function then we can come here and just calculate the full solution for the Poisson equation using that formula so then if we use this, then we write the following. We write phi of r comma t equal to the integral over d3r prime dt prime Green's function of r minus r prime comma t minus t prime source of t of r prime comma t prime then who's the Green's function? So the Green's function is this thing here. So then we write integral over d3r prime dt prime of minus 1 over 4 pi absolute value of r minus r prime. This uh, looks like Coulomb stuff and all these things in electrodynamics that always they have 1 over 4 pi uh, mm, r minus r prime at the bottom sometimes for pi epsilon sub zero and stuff like that, but this is familiar to to the audience, I believe. This is delta of t minus t prime. Now, what's the source? The source of the Poisson equation. So then, the source of the Poisson equation is just this minus four pi uh, rho of t uh, rho of r comma t. So then, this, 
I write here minus 4 pi rho of r prime t prime close here so then the 4 pi is just go away this minus signs go away so then this is the 3 r prime see so then uh, of what mm, of uh, rho of r prime t prime divided by r minus r prime but we need to integrate respect to as well here t prime with this delta this is t prime here this is the time integral and then we just evaluate um, uh, t prime equals to t so then finally we get an electrostatic potential of the form the integral over d3 r prime of rho of r prime comma t divided by r minus r prime so then this mission is accomplished so then this is what we um, actually wanted to get at so then we did it mm. I hope that you enjoyed this video, uh, remember details are important in our channel, so if you like this video, subscribe, like our uh, web page in Facebook, which is Learning with Jacob Ben Isaac, uh, it's easy to find, uh, and just keep tuned for more content, we will keep on developing the introduction to Green's functions, and then uh, until next time, thanks for watching.